All right, guys, welcome back. So in the last video, we were building our front end of our project. Now we're going to start with the back end. So I'm going to go in here onto my terminal. And first of all, if you guys remember, we had this folder that we created for our React project, which is called a client. So I want to go on to my terminal one step back. So I'm going to do CD dot dot. So if I do this, you will see that I'm inside of my main folder and I can see this client folder inside. Look, if I do LS, I can see this folder of client inside because I want to be in a parent folder where I have my client folder, my front end for React, and then another folders and files for my backend. So I'm going to start by creating my backend using uh, Node.js and Express. So for that, I'm going to create, first of all, one file called server.js. You could call it anything that you want, but I'm going to call it server.js. And then I'm going to initialize my package.json file, which will allow me to install things like Express, like Mongoose and other stuff that we might need. So I'm going to do a npm init-y. So when you do npm init-y, it will create for you a package.json file that will allow you to install now all your dependencies for your backend. Okay, so the first thing I want to install is, is going to be Express. Okay, and this should just take a couple of seconds to install. I don't think we have a lot of stuff to install. So we have this one. We have another one that I want to install, which is going to be node mon, like this, npmi node mon. All right, and now I want to install another one, which is the concurrently, concurrently, like that. And finally, I'm going to install mongoose, which will allow us to connect with our database. So I'm going to do npmi mongoose. And I think that should be all for now. All right, so now that we've got everything installed, if you look inside of your package.json file, you should have in there concurrently, which I'm going to explain in a second why do we have this. We're going to have express. We're going to have mongoose and we're going to have nodemon. I will explain each one of these packages that we are installing as we go forward. Okay, so now that we got all of these installed, the first thing that I want to do is going into my server.js. This is going to be my main file. And I want to initialize my express. So I'm going to do a const express equals to require express. And after that, I want to initialize my express, of course. So const app, I'm creating a new app variable that will initialize my express, my server. Then I want to do in here, um, I just want to create, for example, some route. So app.get, just like a forward slash, it means it's like the root of our URL. I'm going to have a function in here with a request and response. Okay, so inside of this, I just want to send a message like res dot send and I want to send a message to the front end saying inside backend. Okay, so what we are doing in here at the moment is just creating a route on the forward slash and we are sending into the front end just a message saying inside of the backend to make sure that everything is working fine. Now I want to do in here is what I want to create a new variable for my port. So like this is going to be, for example, the port 5000. So we want to make sure that our port where we are running our backend is different from the port from the front end. If you guys remember when you initialize your React application, it's going to be by default a port 3000. So I'm putting the port 5000 for my backend. So finally, I'm going to do a app.listen. This will make sure that our server will run on whatever port we want. So my port 5000, I'm going to put in here port. And then I'm just going to put a callback function in here that will do a console.log of 
um, server running on port and I'm gonna put a plus to concatenate with my port so we always know in what port we are running okay and I believe this is all enough to start our backend in order to start our backend we just need to do node and then the name of the file which is server.js and now this is telling me look the server is running on the port 5000 so if I go onto my browser and I look for localhost, localhost 5000, I'm not sure if you guys can see, I'm just increasing the zoom in here on my page. I can see the message inside of the backend, which is amazing, okay? So now that this is working, look, if I put in here inside, of, inside my Node.js backend, imagine that if I save this, and if I try to go in here and refresh the page, as you can see, this is not actually updating. You need to stop the server, restart the server, so node server.js, and now you can see this kind of um, update. So in order to solve this problem, we could go into our package.json, and where we have this script of the start, I could put in here instead of node, I could put in here node mon, which is the package that we just installed. So basically node mon will allow you to restart the server every time you save your files. So you don't have to stop the server and initialize it again. So using this script of npm start for this, we'll run this command of node mon server.js, which is your main file and will allow you to just like restart the server automatically. So look, if I do npm start, this is my script that I have in here. Now this is happening. Let me go back to my server.js. Imagine I'm gonna put just a couple of dots. I'm gonna save this, refresh the page, and look, I got the dots in there. If I remove them and I refresh the page, it's all good. Okay, so we don't need to stop the server anymore. All right, now there's one thing that I would like to do, which is I would like to actually just run my uh, client side, my React and my backend at the same time. You could possibly start two terminals, one to start, for example, um, the front end and another terminal to start the backend, but we can use this package called the concurrently which will allow you to just run all the front end and the back end in one single terminal, in one command. So that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So if we go back in here into our package.json, I'm gonna do in here, uh, let me see, I'm gonna do a start, okay? So we have the start, which is gonna run our nodemon server.js, which is fine. Then I wanna do in here, um, Actually, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. We've got the node server.js. I'm going to create one for my client. And now for my client, I want to run this command of npm start. And then I'm going to put in here dash dash prefix. And I'm going to put in here client. Okay. So to run our client, we are running this command of npm start dash dash prefix, and then the name of the folder, which is the folder that has our React. Okay, I'm gonna put one more comma because I need to add something else. Now, I'm gonna add one more script, which is the dev, and this one will be to run this command of concurrently, which is the package that we just installed. I'm gonna put in here a backslash, and then one of these double quotes, I'm gonna say npm run server, okay? npm run server, let me see if this is correct. npm, yeah, I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna call this one server as well. Server, and we're gonna run this. I'm gonna put this in here on a different one, okay? So we are using the node one just for this script. Okay, don't forget the semicolon. So on my dev, I'm running concurrently, 
then I'm going to put in here a backslash to escape these double quotes. I'm going to do npm run server. And after, I'm going to put another backslash. So I can put in here another double quote. And then I'm going to put another backslash, double quote. And I'm going to put npm run. And I want to run the client. Another backslash. And this, look, you need to make sure that you have one double quote in the beginning of this npm run server and another one of these, another one of these double quotes when you finish. The same for the run client. And I believe that's it. Okay. I believe that's it. Let's save this. Let me stop the server. And this time I'm going to run the command in here on my terminal npm run dev. When I run this, I should be able to run my front end and also my back end. As you can see, my front end is just starting. Okay, so this should be all good. Something wrong in here. No, ah, because I have too much zoom, of course. Okay, I got this. And if I still refresh my page, I can see my back end still in here. Look, it's still here. If I refresh localhost 5000, and this is the localhost 3000. Okay, so it's all, all working fine in one script. Okay, so now that we got all of these working, uh, let's create some routes. Okay, let me go back in here. Server.js. This route in here was just to make sure that everything was working, so we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to do an app.post. So this is where I'm going to be posting some of my values that I want to put on my database. So I'm going to create this route of forward slash API forward slash register. So whenever I'm going to send some data to this backend on this URL of forward slash API forward slash register. Okay. I'm going to put in here and I need to have a request. I need to have a response. Okay. And now in here at the moment, I just want to grab whatever I'm, I'm sending from my front end to the back end. Okay. And we're going to test this in a second. So this is for register. And then I want to have another route, which is going to be the app.get. Let me see my app.get and I want to have just API users. So this is a route that I'm going to create whenever I want to grab some of the users that they are already on the database. Okay, so now we got these two routes. Let's start actually sending some data from our front end into our back end. So I'm going to close all these other files that we got around here. And I'm going to go inside of my client. I want to open my, is it my form? Okay, this is where we were sending. Just put this in here with this two spaces. So this was the place, my form.js. If you remember, we were just like typing down something in here and I believe it was getting stored in a state. Not yet, not yet, we didn't, we didn't do that. So we can do it now. All right, so let's go in here on our form. On the top, I want to put in here a const, const user details. So I'm creating a new state on my React. I'm going to call these user details. And this state, whenever I want to update it, I'm going to use this function called set user details. So my state user details. And then this is a function that I will run whenever I want to update my state. And now I'm going to put in here use state. So use state is going to be a function that will allow you to pass some values to your state. When you are using this use.state, you need to import it on the top like this. Use state. Okay, and what's going to be the value of my state? Okay, I want to have initially a key. So I'm putting this as an object, as you noticed, I'm going to put a key of username, for example. Okay, username, user email, 
also empty, an empty string, and then, for example, a message, which is going to say, for example, the user is registered or the user is already on the database and so on. Okay, so now we have this state, okay? When I'm going to be changing my inputs, all right? So when I'm going to be changing my inputs, I'm going to be typing on there. I'm going to say on change. I want to run a function, okay? So let me see. I'm going to have in here a function called form values, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing in here, okay? On change, I'm gonna run this function in here of form values. Now, when we are typing down something on these inputs, we wanna run this function, form values. So const form values, think that's the name, correct? Yeah, okay, const form values is equals to a function. And what we want to do with this function is, first of all, we want to grab the event. So the event, of course, is going to be you that you are typing down in there. And what we want to do is, I want to set my user details, okay? So setting the user details is basically, we are updating this state up here. And the first thing I want to do is, Obviously, I want to copy all the state that was there from before using the spread operator. So user details, oops, user details. And then, of course, I want to overwrite, okay, whatever is the event.target.name, okay? So if for some reason I'm typing down on this input, the current name of this input is username. But as you can see on the top on our state, we also have a key with a username. So I can use these brackets, okay? So I can put inside the name of this input. So this is the way that you can use variables, strings. So you can actually get a key from an object. Okay, so having this event.target.name, if this name is exactly the same like this one up here, it's going to be like you are representing it. Okay, so what do I want to put inside of my user.name? I want to put my event.target.value. Okay, and I think that's it. And I think that's it. If for some reason I'm inputting, I'm typing down something on this input for my user email, okay? This user email has a name of user email. So it means that I will be updating when I run this function, I will be updating this part and putting whatever is the value of this current event.target.value inside of this input. Okay, so we got this. Now, I think there's something else that we are missing, which is this button. Okay, so this button, when you click on this form, okay, you are going to put in here on submit. I think that's it that I have. So on submit, you want to run a function called register, like this. You're going to run this function of register. So this function register does not exist at the moment. Let's create it. So const register is going to be equals to an arrow function. And what I want to do with this function is, first of all, I want to grab an event, okay? And I want to do the event.prevent default, like this. Because when you submit a form, by default, you are actually reloading the page or going somewhere else. We want to prevent that kind of event, okay? So just stop it in there. Then the next thing I want to do is, I want to do in here a const, const body, which is equals to my JSON dot stringify. Because when I'm sending some data from my front end to my back end, I want to send it as a JSON format, 
okay? So that's why I need to do json.stringify. And what are the values that I wanna stringify? Okay, I'm creating a new object with the value of username. And then I wanna pass in here, the value is gonna be user details, which is my state. And I wanna put inside the dot user name. And I'm gonna do the same thing for I'm creating a new key of user email. Let me just copy this, user email. And I wanna go put in here the value that is on my state of user details and wanna grab the user email. Okay, so I'm stringifying this kind of body. So this is what I'm gonna send to my backend. Now, I don't remember if we installed Axios or not. Yeah, we installed Axios in our first lesson. So I can see on my package.json for React that we got Axios in here. So let's import Axios on the top. I'm gonna do import Axios from Axios, okay? And down here, after you have the body that you wanna send to your backend, I wanna do in here a const res equals to await axios dot post. Okay, so one thing that we need to put in here, we need to put this keyword of await because when you are dealing with the backend, this is gonna be an asynchronous function. So you need to make sure that on the top of your function register, you put the async, okay? Don't forget about putting this async and down here for this function, you need to put an await. So const res, this is gonna be your variable that is gonna bring whatever coming the response from your backend. And then I'm gonna put in here await axios.post. I'm selecting this as a post method because usually when you wanna send something into your database, you should use like this method of post. Okay, now what do I wanna put inside of this post? First of all, I need to put in here the forward slash API, forward slash register. Remember that this is the, the URL where you wanna send this onto your backend, okay? But to make sure that you're gonna go to this uh, URL correctly for your backend, forward slash API, forward slash register, look on my server.js, this is the, the URL that we, we set up from before. So what I'm gonna do in here is, I need to create, let me see where was it? Yes, I need to create on my React in here inside of the source, I wanna create a new file called setupproxy.js. So setupproxy.js. And this file in here, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna create this. I'm actually gonna copy, I have it in here on the side, and I'm gonna copy it in here. You need to write down all this code, which is const create proxy middleware, require proxy middleware. So this is that package that we installed in the, in the previous video. And then in here, you need to put all this code that will allow you to connect your front end to the back end. You are saying that whenever you start a route with a forward slash API, you are gonna send this route to this target, which is your back end. If you remember, look, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 5000, this is your back end, okay? So whenever you are sending a request, starting with forward slash API, you know that you're gonna send this to your back end. Okay, so now that we got this, we can go back into our form.js. We had our axios.post. We got this api.register. So let me go back in here. The next thing that you wanna put after this is gonna be, oops, is gonna be your body, which you just did in here on the top. And then you need to put in here an object going on to the next line. And this object, what you wanna set up in here is the headers, okay? So you need to set up some headers telling your browser what kind of content are you sending into the backend. 
So I'm gonna put in here that the kind of content that I'm sending, so the content type is gonna be of application slash JSON. I believe that's that. Okay, so I got this. Yeah, this should be all good. So when you are sending this kind of body to this URL on your backend with this kind of headers, I forgot an S, okay, don't forget these headers, content type application slash JSON. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go in here and just do a console.log of the response. I'm going to put in here response. We can put response, doesn't matter. All right, so we should be able to send this now into our backend using this. Now, on your backend, let's go into our server.js. In order for us to receive this data from the front end, you need to specify in here two things, which is, let me just do in here, which is this one. So after this, before any of your routes, I'm going to put in here app.use, and then I'm going to put in here express.url encoded, and then I'm going to put extended, I think extended false. I think that's it, if I'm not wrong. Okay, so app.use express.url encoded. So just make sure that you are passing all the data from the front end to the back end. You need to set up these. And there is going to be another one in here, which is the app.use express.json. I think that's it. That's the only two things that we need. It's just to make sure that we can actually uh, decode all this code that we are sending from the front end to the back end and we are sending it as an adjacent format. So if everything is fine, I should be able to do in here a console.log of my request. Look, when you are starting this kind of URL, you have this function with a request. This is what you are sending from the front end to the back end. So I'm gonna put in here a console.log of my response request.body. And then I'm going to put in here a response. So this is what you send to the front end. So response.json. I'm going to send this response as a JSON format with a message of data received. Okay. Let's try this now on the browser and see if this is actually working. Okay. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open my console. I'm going to put in here, for example, Telmo and Telmo at email. Press. Um, maybe we need to stop the server. Okay. I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to just like restart the server because we did a lot of different changes in here. Let's see if this is going to work. Let me open this, the console. Let's go to register. I'm going to put my name, press register. And there it is. Look. On my response, on my front end, where was it? On the form, when I'm sending this onto my back end, I can see on my back end on the terminal, look, this is the body that I'm sending from the front end to the back end. So I got this on my back end now from this console.log. Where is my server? Here. Okay, the request.body. I'm getting an object with a username of Telmo Sampaio user email of telmo at email.com. And then I'm sending a response to the front end with an object of message and data received. So if I go back to my form, this response is being stored in this variable. And then I'm logging it on the console on this line 33. So as you can see on the line 33 in here on the top, when I open this, I opened the data and I got this message of data received. Okay, I think this is quite a long video right now. So now we are able to pass some data from our front end to the back end. 
And now in the next video, which I believe is gonna be the last one, we are just gonna to connect to our MongoDB database. We are gonna store these values in there. And then we are also gonna retrieve the values from there and put them on the front end. All right, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.